Frazier, who is an animal activist, and um, he formerly worked for a farm animal rights movement for the 10 Billion Lives Tour. He started out as a tour operator, worked his way up to tour coordinator, and then became tour manager. Yeah. So the 10 Billion Lives Tour is a program of farm animal rights movement, and it is a video outreach tour where members of the public get paid a dollar to watch a four and a half minute video that documents the everyday living conditions and standard industry practices in the meat, dairy, and egg industries. So can you explain to us the, the tour setup and how it operates, what actually happens behind the scenes, or what happens on tour? Yeah, so we refer to them as tours because it's basically activists traveling full time doing these pay-per-view outreach events. So. Um, traveling and living out of these vehicles for a few months at a time, going to college campuses and music festivals and street fairs, doing the pay-per-view outreach events where um, members of the public get to watch these videos and have a conversation with really knowledgeable, empathetic, inspiring people. What got you into activism in the first place? Um, it was really learning about these issues and just feeling like, um, I think it's something that most people uh, end up feeling at one point or another like it, it just isn't enough to just know that we're not contributing to these uh, yeah. industries we need to uh, we all get that that itch to be out there um, informing other people about the things that changed our lives and uh, yeah so it really was that simple okay you've gone from tour operator um, uh, so you've been in the front lines of doing activism and now to tour manager can you tell us what the pros and cons are of being, you know, in the forefront and then behind the scenes? Yeah, this actually really is a good question. It's something I struggle with a lot because when you're uh, out there doing face-to-face -face outreach with people, I think it's um, it's something that once you really get comfortable with that, which takes time, but once you get comfortable with it, um, it just feels like the best way you can possibly be spending your time. So there are very significant trade-offs to being out there doing events yourself face to face with people versus being a behind the scenes kind of person and helping to uh, coordinate and plan and handle logistics and things like that uh, you can really rationalize how important that is you know it's important um, you know somebody's got to do that kind of work mm -hmm. um, but it's it's fulfilling but in a very different way um, so that was something that I struggled with for a little while um, but uh, I got uh, all of my motivation and all of my inspiration from coordinating and managing people like you mm -hmm. and the tour operators who um, you know just made it the next best thing to being out there myself was uh, talking to them every day hearing the stories of the interactions you're having and seeing mm -hmm. pictures and all of that all the so, updates all the updates so, yeah. did um, while getting into the position that you're mm -hmm. in did you have any um, like qualifications that were acquired or how did you kind of fit into the position? Is it something that you learned along the way? Well, when I first started in the yeah. program, it was really just because of initiative of um, wanting to be involved in it. Uh, uh, a local group that I was part of um, went to volunteer at one of the pay-per-view events, and we mm -hmm. thought it was the most impactful thing we had done in a long time. So uh, I was elected in the group to mm -hmm. reach out to farm and say, hey, can we borrow that equipment and do events uh, a little more often? Oh, cool. And that turned into um, a job offer of doing the events uh, myself. So it wasn't so much having qualifications uh, for doing it other than you know having the, the basic knowledge base of the subject and um, you know being a generally responsible person but it was more of uh, showing the initiative of, uh, you know, wanting to be involved more and uh, I've definitely talked to people at other organizations that have done um, volunteer work or internships that turn into um, part-time or full-time positions that's largely how it happens okay so, so starting yeah. somewhere and working your way up absolutely okay. I want to talk about introvertedness versus being an extrovert I spoke about this in my last interview and I feel like it's gonna come up pretty often um, because activism, uh, many forms of activism, mm -hmm. is very upfront and it involves talking to people, it involves interacting, and I know not a lot of people are comfortable doing that, mm -hmm. and there may be people out there that feel like they want to be involved and they want to do something, um, but they're not entirely yeah, comfortable interacting with people, and I know you were mm -hmm. telling me that you weren't always no, that um, was me. Like that, yeah. That so you're a bit me. more introverted. How did you get more comfortable 
um, yeah, talking to people. Yeah, that's um, that's something I spent a lot of time thinking about mm -hmm. um, because I was a, a relatively introverted person, probably you know very introverted, uh, even after graduating college. I just really um, preferred to um, not. Um, you know, start conversations with strangers or be the center of attention or, or try to get people's attention. It was very counter to my nature, but um, I think the, the driving force was just knowing um, how uh, badly animals need us to be the messengers mm -hmm. uh, of this information. And then I think I just realized that uh, if, it, if I couldn't get myself comfortable with this, then, um, then I would feel like I was uh, failing them. And, uh, you know, if I wasn't doing it, then who would be doing it? So I, I convinced myself that I, I need to grow in these ways. I need to get over some of these um, um, you know, aversions that I have. So the thing that helped me the most mm -hmm. was um, the Humane Society had a Proposition 2 in California in 2008. So maybe some people remember this, but it was a, a ballot proposition to uh, phase out some of the most intense forms of confinement for farmed animals. and. It felt like a good place to, to jump in and be helpful. They needed volunteers. They were trying to qualify for the ballot. So they needed people to go out and collect signatures uh, to get it on the ballot. And I thought, that sounds like kind of minimal dialogue with people. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and it seems like something that I could handle. So I signed up to volunteer with them. And I really couldn't have imagined how much I was going to grow um, in my communication skills and my, my confidence as an activist just during the several months of doing that. But what I found is that if you have the, the, the foundation, which is basically just the drive and the passion mm -hmm. to be a voice for these animals, um, then whatever um, um, insecurities you have about or may have about your, your, your skills, um, all of that comes with time and experience. And I know that sounds obvious to say, but there is no substitute for just putting yourself out there and um, kind of full immersion, having conversations with people. Um, you're in every way you feel like you want to grow as an activist that happens with mm -hmm. time and experience and surrounding yourself by um, people that are uh, knowledgeable and, and passionate like yourself mm -hmm. and um, support as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I was always comfortable speaking to people either. Yeah. Yeah. And the more I did it, the more I volunteered for mm -hmm. tour before I went on tour. Um, it got me a lot more comfortable. Like, I didn't know what to say to uh, people who had just watched the video. After watching, I was like trying to listen in mm -hmm. on the, the uh, tour operator's conversations and how to say and what to say. I wasn't comfortable with it. No. Well, I think we all feel a lot of pressure to. Uh, we were talking about this yesterday, right? We feel yeah. a lot of pressure that every word we choose to say, um, um, every thing that we communicate to people, um, we put a lot of pressure on ourselves that if I say it just right and I give them all the information they need, then they will make major changes. And yeah. if I don't do that, then they won't. It's a lot of pressure to feel, um, but um, you know, as much information um, as we may have, as much... Um, it's convincing an argument. Yeah, <laughs> that it, it really truly comes back to uh, to the basics of, of speaking uh, from your heart and speaking with passion and conviction, and that's what people relate to. You hear a lot about um, burnout in the movement and mm. being an activist. Um, a lot of people experience burnout or come close to feeling burnt out. Um, do you have any suggestions or tips for activists to avoid getting to that point? Yeah, I mean, I, I think honestly the first thing is, is not being in denial about the reality of burnout. It's something mm -hmm. that um, I think anybody who is involved in the movement or wants to be, uh, we're so deeply driven um, when it comes to this issue that we, we think oh, that that won't happen to me, that can't happen to me, I can't let that happen to me because there's too much work to be done. Yeah. Uh, but I think we're really just uh, uh, fooling ourselves if we think that we're above that. Um, I think burnout really comes back to uh, to balance, to living a balanced life, which mm -hmm. is something that you know, there's thousands of books on, on how to attempt to have a balanced life, but I think it's about um, not neglecting parts of your nature that are really, really important to keeping you uh, kind of centered and um, keeping you um, in a place where you can be the most effective activist that you can be. Do you have any wise uh, parting words for people that are watching this interview? Um, Honestly, more than anything, it's it's encouraging people to, to get out and get active for animals because um, it's not even about the, the 
the skills that you feel like you have to offer as much as it is about the passion and the drive. <laughs> they agree. <laughs>